when India's new energy minister, Prahlad Joshi, drove a hydrogen car to parliament a few days ago, it flagged off a renewed debate on the whole lithium battery versus hydrogen fuel cells versus other emerging technologies and which one will take pole position in the tech battle for transportation. Presently, the forerunner is electric vehicles or EVs running on batteries which are primarily lithium ion based. But the challenger the minister patronized is fuel cell electric vehicle or FCEV that uses compressed hydrogen which then combines with oxygen to power an electric motor for propulsion. As compared to the present set of electric vehicles which run on charged batteries, primarily of lithium ion make. The minister said, this vehicle demonstrates the transformative potential of hydrogen mobility in shaping India's clean future. While the electric battery versus hydrogen versus other technologies like sodium ion has been debated about for some time, what is interesting is the competitive hues it has taken not just down to rival technologies and companies, but whole nations themselves. After the Second World War, transportation depended on the internal combustion engine or ICE, which was dominated by American companies like Ford and General Motors. The Europeans too had a share in the pie, particularly German brands like the Volkswagen Group, which had a plethora of premium brands ranging from Porsche, BMW, Bentley and Audi. But Japan was the dark horse by the time it was the 80s and 90s. Its vehicles racing to the top of the sales charts, even in markets like the US with its highly evolved market scenario and deeply insular consumers. Toyota soon became the world's largest selling motor car while Suzuki's Indian partnership, Maruti Suzuki, made it a heavyweight. Others like Honda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, all became cars people vied for all over the world, with brand Japan becoming numero uno in the auto sector in general and especially in passenger cars. Then disasters of sorts stuck with the advent of electric vehicle technology. Japanese brands perhaps did not take the new technology too seriously at first, or perhaps it was China's runaway success in EV battery technology, straddling the ecosystem right from lithium refining to battery technology to the final products. Today, eight out of 10 top selling EV cars are from China. The Japanese strategy through all this has been threefold. One, hybrid, where we use a mix of petrol and electric or natural gas. That should be the way forward, the Japanese said, at least during the transition phase. Secondly, electric as a clean energy depends not just on its use, but in ensuring that the source electricity used to charge the batteries actually come from clean sources and not from coal, as is the case primarily in countries like India. A petrol vehicle that follows emission norms and is less polluting would do equally well. And thirdly, and most crucially, has been Japan's clambering onto other future technologies, primarily hydrogen fuel cells for now, though others like sodium, iron, etc. are not anathema to them. Which has made detractors wonder whether it's a case of being miffed at the Chinese march in EV that is the real reason. Any which way, while hydrogen technology is years away from becoming commonplace, the curious thing right now is how other major markets hitch a ride on. India is officially technology or medium agnostic, though recent government moves to lower the incentives for EV, even while raising it for hybrid models, at least in some states, as well as stocking up of hydrogen as a promising technology like Minister Joshi's hydrogen ride, is only one example. It does make one wonder whether India is also following the Japanese playbook when it comes to dealing with a strategic rival like China. What do you think?